Hi, and welcome to this video. Um, I'm pleased to be with Tamara Sanchez, who is a youth minister uh, within the Archdiocese of Glasgow. And it's really to talk about um, Tamara's faith journey and some of the reflections that she has on that journey and some of the, the tips that she might give others uh, based on her, her story of faith. And Tamara, um, a, a good way to start, I think, is maybe to ask you about, you know, where does your faith actually come from? Good question. So I was born in Spain, so in Madrid. So I had a, a really faithful Spanish grandmother who used to bring me to mass. So as a small child, I think that had a really big influence. Um, but I would say I really, really came to faith in a, in a big way as a teenager. So I had then moved to America and there was actually a really good youth minister in the area where I lived who really made the gospel very real to me. And through that, I, I met friends who were really practicing their faith. And so I think through that to know him, my faith really became very real and very strong. And in terms of, of that, you know, what made the difference for you? Was it the fact that you're exposed to the realism of the Gospels and how it really made sense to you personally? Is that really what helped you in your journey? Definitely. Yeah, I think it was just seeing people who genuinely loved Christ and were trying to follow him in their ordinary lives. So in my life, who I knew was a very devout Christian, and I just noticed that there was something really special about him, the way that he interacted with us as students. Um, I know he had like a faith club after school, but it was more how he did the ordinary thing that you could tell he did them with this great love and sense of vocation. And so even as a teenager, I really noted that that he was doing things with great love and in a really committed and genuine way. And so that really struck me. I was looking, I think as many teenagers still do, I was looking for that authenticity, that it was something real. And so when I saw models of the faith being lived out, I definitely wanted to participate in that. In, in many senses you have um, through your, your ministry um, in the Archdiocese of Glasgow mm -hmm. as, as a youth minister. And um, can you maybe tell us a little bit about what you do um, in the Archdiocese and, and what you get out of it? Yeah, great question. So I'm a youth minister, so in Clyde Banks at St. Uh, Margaret's and Our Holy Redeemer's parishes, and more recently in St. Patrick's as well in Anderson. And yeah, it's great fun. So obviously with COVID, things have changed a wee bit, um, but generally speaking, we um, sort of go into schools and get to know the kids in that way. Uh, we have a Friday night youth group that's amazing that we've been I think, running for five years now using this life team program. We just started a running club. We did lots of groups over Zoom uh, during lockdown and things. But it's really, I suppose, youth ministry for me, it's all about that relational ministry. So it's getting to know the kids where they're at, getting to know their stories, figuring out their questions um, and just finding ways to help them connect with Christ. You know, as, as that's what happened to me as a teenager was that there were good adults who took a genuine interest in me, listened to my questions, um, and in time sort of helped create that environment where I could make that decision to really get to know the Lord better and make my faith my own. So yeah, it's great fun. I would highly recommend getting involved in it to anybody listening to this if you can. It's really good. Absolutely. The running club sounds good. I'm a keen runner, so that's uh, that sounds great. Oh, perfect. That's really good. Um, I, I'm just thinking about children, and they have an a, a kind of ability to ask some quite profound questions um, about faith. Um, mm. I mean, I've, I've got two young children and they often ask me quite perplexing questions sometimes. Mm. And uh, you wonder how qualified you are to answer them. But in terms of your experience, what are the types of questions young people have now about faith? Fantastic. That's such a good question. Um, one of my favourite places to do youth ministry is in Our Holy Redeemer Primary School, uh, in just where I live in Clyde Bank. And I'm trying to think some of my favourite questions. One question was, well, just very basically, like, how do I know God is real? How do I know that he's there? Or a lot of kids will say, but I can't, I can't see God. I can't see him. So, you know, how do you, you know, children are, are brilliant in that way. They're very practical. I, I find children are immensely practical. They're like, well, I can't see him, so how do I know he's there? And so we often say like, oh, you, you breathe in oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. And you can't see that, but you see the effects of that in your life, don't you? And, and then the kids sort of switch on and they're like, yeah, that's true. So, so those sort of very basic questions, obviously, because 
the world we live in is just a bit more secular, really. So I think just that basic, does God exist? I get a lot. Um, and I think what I found too is that kids are really drawn to the crucifix. So like obviously in Catholic schools, most classrooms will have a crucifix and it's pretty amazing. Obviously, like when they say their prayers often turn towards the crucifix, but they ask lots of questions of why is he there? Like, why is Jesus there? Like, why did he, why did he die? Did he have to die? Uh, you know, and even like very profoundly, like, can you do that for me? You know, like even like just like they really get to the, to the heart of it. And, you know, what does this mean? You know? Uh, so I, I think I found like using lots of like symbols and images that we look at lots of art together, like even just really like Caravaggio, you know, doubting Thomas, or you have, uh, you know, our Lord sticking his finger through uh, St. Thomas's side, even that, um, like those visual images seem to really help the kids ask the big questions. And they're, they're really quite personal, like really like, what does this mean for me? Mm. Even like really small children, like did Jesus do this for me? You know, does he love me? Does he care about me? Does he care about my granny? You know, like it's just, it's all really quite practical and devotional, I, I find. So it's really great fun. Mm. It's really good. Really, really good questions. And I think it's, it's perhaps the, the nature of the environment that children are grown up in, you know, mm. you know, like the internet age and kind of mm. the Google culture of getting answers to things quickly. Mm. And, and faith does demand a degree of, of patience, mm. I guess. And, uh, and I think, mm. you know, in terms of your own journey, have you felt that, you know, being patient with God has been important? in terms of being able to grow with God? Definitely. Oh, yeah. Like, I think something I've talked to the kids about a lot and I've thought about is that God exists outside of time, right? So I think that's quite a Catholic position. I don't know. But basically, like, God sees everything all at once. Mm. And so for me, I think that God is, like, taking ages, you know, and helping sort something out for me. You know, <laughs> I'm, like, really earnestly pleading that he does that. But yeah. I think for me, something that's helped is that, well, like, God has known me since before I was born. Like, he sees me at 97 years old or however old I'll live to be. And, you know, and into all of eternity, like, he see, like everything is present to him all at once. And so what might seem like ages to me, like, God, God knows. And he knows that maybe the necessity of that waiting in, in ways that I can't understand. Um, there's a really good quote I heard once um, when I was in my undergrad, but God is too wise to be mistaken and he's too good to be unkind that when we can't trace his hand we must learn to trust his heart so basically like just trusting in god's character because sometimes to us if we do get frustrated like we get a bit cross with him like why are you taking ages god to answer this prayer or, like where are you in this but to go back to those you know primary sevens who are pointing to jesus on the cross you know and the, and the crucifix in their classroom saying oh he must be really good like he must really love us if this is what he's done so i think for me, like in times of having to wait for God, like going back to the basics of who he is and that he is trustworthy because he does love us a lot, you know. Um, but yeah, definitely there's been a lot of waiting, I think, and lots of questions and seeming contradictions on my faith journey, for sure. But they've been times of real growth upon reflection. Yeah, and that's why they call it a journey, isn't it? Yeah. Um, we can take different directions and so on. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm just thinking about the fact that, you know, young people and the, the people that you're dealing with are asking really interesting and profound questions and you know and if you look at some of the the data that comes out in terms of um you know when you know children kind of decide to kind of move on from their faith in some ways often it kind of happens when they're you know in secondary school and they're exposed to a number of different ways of thinking and and maybe exposed to a number of, of different things that kind of distract them away from the mm -hmm. faith and and I guess it's a quite a difficult question. I'm not expecting you to, to mm -hmm. you know, find the magic bullet for it necessarily. But you know, thinking about how do we think about trying mm -hmm. to retain, you know, people that are going through their own development, particularly around about the secondary school level. You know, what kind of strategies have you learned from mm -hmm. your youth ministry that might help us think about that more deeply? Mm, yeah, great question. I think, well, if I were to take my own experience and also what I've seen in our young people, they need really good models of faith. So they need to see people really living out their Catholic faith in front of them. So I can think of a couple of kids that come to our youth group who come from families that maybe don't practice very much at all, like really good families, like really good people, but just don't have that faith at home. And I think a lot of them was, for example, just getting to know me. So I would go into the canteen and just pray with the guys, you know, if somebody lost their phone, 
you'd say a wee prayer to St Anthony, like literally the most simple mm -hmm. things. But kids notice that and so I think seeing that lived out, um, they want to know more. So we have this youth group and a lot of kids have been coming to that for years and I would say of all the kids that come to our youth group, maybe two or three of them would come from maybe kind of practicing families. Most of them wouldn't come from families where faith is really a big deal. We have kids from non-Catholic backgrounds and so I think it, it's creating a community in which they can meet um, peers and also adults who, who love God and who love their faith. So I think in this generation, it is really the same as for when I was in high school, I believe, and maybe even it's always been that way. I don't know with young people, but that authenticity, they want to see something real, something that makes a difference to their life, like something that's genuine. And I think if they, they have that opportunity to see that lived out and that transition from primary to high school, to have those really good role models, um, then I think they will engage because they want meaning and beauty in their lives. They want that sense of love and they want to be part of something bigger than themselves. It's dead human. So I think if they have that, that outlet in which they're able to, to express themselves and be part of something bigger, whether it's a church youth group or being invited to mass, but in a, in a very um, kind of genuine way, you know, then I think, I think a lot of kids would be more keen than you'd think. You know? Yeah. They're quite more yeah. open than I think a lot of us would assume generally. That's what yeah. I found anyway. Yeah, I think the theme that I'm really picking up from you is, is this um, idea of living faith and mm -hmm. making it an active part of your life. And sometimes you do need, as you say, role models to help you um, along that mm -hmm. journey. And it's not necessarily about doing it all by yourself. There's something to come mm -hmm. from fellowship and, and being oh, yeah. with others uh, as well. And, um, and just kind of thinking... Um, about that in terms of you know the future for yourself you know mm. what do you see as your future faith journey based on your past what, what are you mm. hoping to get out of your faith um, mm. over the next decade for example what is it you hope to achieve through your faith? Good question I think during lockdown I really learned a lot about the importance of community and the idea that um, when Christ saves us he saves us into the church's body you know and like we're part of this this incredible living, you know, body, you know, Christ's body, Christ's own body on earth, really. So I think in the past, in the next decade, I think I want to just grow deeper roots in the, in the church. Like I want to develop deeper friendships um, and just find ways within, within those deep friendships to really be outward looking. I love the idea of like the local parish, you know, and, and who's around you, who are your neighbours and really inviting people into that, that community in a really genuine way. So I think that's what I've learned is that we're we're made for each other really as human beings and I think it was C.S. Lewis who wrote that um, the New Testament knows nothing of the solitary Christian you know mm. that and again it, our culture can become quite individualistic but really at the end of the day the Lord hasn't made us to walk it alone you know he really wants us to be part of his body part of his church so I certainly want to to grow in, in finding my place in that and really having deep roots and and then through that, through this friendship, inviting other people to be to be part of, of God's family, you know, in a very deep and kind like, of lived sort of way. I think that's that's you know the key, isn't it? Is is not kind of weighing it gently on your sleeve, your faith through your actions, and trying to ensure that through the community that others can see benefit from it um, in mm -hmm. many ways. And you know, obviously, we're part of this new evangelization project, but I think evangelization has a connotations with it sometimes mm. and it's, it's actually something that's gentle um, mm. and something that comes through how we interact with other people in many mm. ways and, and and when we think about the experience of other people sometimes we we, we might fall into the, the trap of thinking that in some ways you know some people are better than others because they've got a better prayer life they might mm. you know think more deeply about their faith than others but we're all different and we all have a different approach to faith. And I guess that's a question for you. You know, you talked about prayer earlier and, you know, I'm just thinking about, you know, what's your own kind of approach to prayer? Do you do you have certain prayers that you like to say? And, you know, and, and how, does, how does prayer feature within your life? Mm, great question. Yeah, I'm quite passionate about prayer. I'm not saying I'm brilliant at it. I'm like a lot like of our teenagers. I'm super easily distracted, you know quite a short attention span sometimes but uh so i mean very practically i'm really lucky so because i work for the church i get to live in a church house that has an oratory with the blessed sacrament so i'm really lucky in that like for me like just praying in front of yeah. our lord in that way like like in his 
Eucharistic presence is really helpful, but I realize most of us don't have that. So kind of apart from that, I try to just pray throughout my day. Um, so I really love the, the Jesus prayer. Mm-hmm. It's like they breathe in like Lord Jesus Christ, one of God, you can breathe out, have mercy on me, it's in there, just Lord Jesus, have mercy. I love it because it's super short. So yeah. if I'm in the school and like one of the boys starts punching another boy in the face and I actually can't cope at that moment, <laughs> <laughs> I often will just pray that Jesus prayer in my head or um, yeah, like I'm quite into sports. I'm part of a triathlon club and uh, we need, we're doing our sprints and things in Scottsdale and uh, often I'm just mindful of God's presence, you know, as I'm running in the rain and I'm seeing like kind of the light glisten on the streets and things. It's just something just acknowledging God in that, you know, and thanking him for it. So yeah, I would say my, my prayer life's really quite simple. Like I try to have those set apart times to just be with God, but it's just sort of acknowledging him in my day to day when I'm really enjoying myself, but also when I'm a bit stressed and don't really know how to deal with the situation, just being reminded that he's present with me and just asking him for help. So. The everyday presence is important and kind of reminding yourself of that and, and um and that becomes intrinsically important to your daily life mm. yeah yeah um and just kind of this could be quite a difficult question mm. but then it might not be it just depends whether or not it's it's been considered before but you know mm. one of the things that we've asked a few people that we've interviewed is if you're able to kind of sit down with god and ask him mm. anything is there any particular question you'd like to ask him yourself mm. Yes, I have a, this is like my life question, right? So I've always had this question since I was a tiny kid and I still have this question now. So I don't know how I would, exactly how I would phrase it to God himself, but my question is basically, okay, God, like you are, you are so good. Like you've made the world and uh, you've obviously made us to know you. And like life is found in you and goodness is finding, found in you. And my question is, and why is it that more people don't know you or don't seem to find you or, or seem to have, find it really hard to connect with you? Does that make sense? That's what I would ask God. Because, like, certainly, like, God wants to be known. Like, we see that, you know, the person of Christ, like, God literally writes himself into our story. You know, he's, he's born this tiny baby. He has dinner parties with sinners. Like, God wants to be known. Uh, and he loves us. But it just, I have a lot of really good friends, even my own twin sister, you know, who really struggle with faith, I find it really hard. Like I was talking to my sister on the phone the other day and she said, tomorrow I watched this thing on the History Channel and not that that's where I should get my knowledge, but that's like some people have this thing in their brain that they just don't, don't seem to be able to connect with God and I feel I have that thing. So yeah. I would ask God, um, yeah, basically like, why does it seem that some people do find it quite hard um, to connect with someone to know him? That would be my question because yeah, obviously he seems to really want to be known. It's a very good question, and, and and it's funny because it's one part of your one time in your life you might feel that way, then something can happen, then all of a sudden it just becomes very present to you. So sometimes you don't have that state of mind all through your life, but then there can be something that, that changes. I mean, I'm thinking about my own faith journey, you know, mm-hmm. being kind of up and down, and, and there's been a few events that have triggered a kind of deepened relationship with God, and and um, I couldn't I couldn't necessarily foresee that. Um, so. I think God does work in mysterious ways, but I think I think there's also that cultural issue at the moment as well, isn't there? The kind of rise of of atheism, sometimes quite aggressive atheism too. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's really helpful, Tamara. It's been a pleasure um, talking to you um, about uh, your faith journey and and also some tips as well around prayer. And it's um, it's great to hear about your your work as well um, as as a youth minister and. Um, all the best with it and I wish you every success in it. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.